Hello, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a brand new episode of CSK News. And first off, I'm sure many of you guys are aware the, the setup has changed a little bit. I am now here officially in Las Vegas in my brand new apartment. And therefore, I need to figure out new things for in terms of sound, how it sounds for all of you guys on the other end of this. I'm going to figure out things, what to hang up, get some furniture in here as well to absorb the sound. And as well as over there, there's my computer setup. So I still have a lot to figure out over here, but I hope you guys all enjoy. Welcome back to another episode and a lot of breaking news these past few days. Let's get into our first story, though, all about Doc. Now, if you guys don't know who Doc is, actually one of our latest FPL members. It was announced a few months ago and he was a particularly very young member, 17 years of age, but also ran into a lot of issues out there, much like Rops when he first joined FPL, uh, actually not using his microphone a bunch when he played it, so he's accused a bunch of cheating. Now, if you guys don't know Doc's backstory, he actually has one of his personal friends, or I guess you could say closer friends, although that's a whole other story in itself, the issues he's had with his friend who actually takes the mic over for him and does his in-game calls while he plays at home with his parents. Now, if you guys don't know the background of the situation, I talked to Doc via Twitter as well and thanks to him for reaching out about the details of his home living situation. Now, there's a lot of speculation out there. Is Doc a cheater? I really, I don't think so. And like Face It Mikey said on Twitter, innocent until proven guilty. So I think we're good on that standpoint, but also bigger issues in terms of communication. Can you actually be allowed to have someone play CSGO in terms of your in-game calls while you actually play the game itself? And it seems as of right now, it's largely okay with Face It. Now going forward as well, to give you guys more details that Doc told me, and you guys might know these public details as well, it seems that Doc will be trying to move out when he turns 18, which will be in September, actually early September, I believe September 4th is his 18th birthday. He's going to attempt, at least he told me, he's going to try and move out of his parents' house. And apparently both of his parents are so anti-gaming. And also another issue is his dad works from home. So even though you guys think if, it, if his parents leave it during the day, he could, of course, play with his microphone on. That's his main excuse is that his parents are very, very anti-gaming and he doesn't want to disturb them while they're working. And he works, he actually plays right next to his dad's workstation in that house or in their, in their home, whatever that setup might be, and his dad does work from home, so that's why he can actually in-game call even when they are working. So, obviously a very difficult situation. None of us really know how strict his parents really are, or if the other side of the story was there's about speculation out there, is he just afraid to talk in the microphone? We're going to find out what's true very shortly here in September. I guess it's a few months away. Until then, he will be inactive in FPL, guys, but best of luck going forward to Doc. He should be back to face at Pro League matches sometime in the future and in September if he does actually move out and figure out his communication issues issues, but that wasn't a pretty big story. Uh, is he a cheater? Is he just a shy? We're going to find out in the near future. But in the biggest news I want to talk about today is the BBC and the latest article about gaming addiction. If you guys have not seen Richard Lewis's video, I'll link it down below. He has some contrasting points and some great points as well in his video, but some I do disagree with the way he went about it. Uh, of course, the BBC has been notable in the past of taking the words out of context of certain stories and articles, so I really encourage you guys to watch Richard Lewis's video down below. But of course, the overwhelming uh, the plot uh, of this actual article as well is to say that gaming addiction is now a new defined disorder by the World Health Organization. This is actually in big news as well because all of us watching this video are likely gamers and what they define as a gaming addiction could be starkly lower than what you guys actually play or spend in terms of time when you actually game yourselves. So to go into detail about this, we actually have them having three guidelines as to what actually might define a gaming addiction disorder. And these guidelines are so broad and so out there, it really could be applied to not only just gaming, but pretty much anything you do uh, throughout the week. And all these three guidelines, you really can re really realize you actually follow these guidelines with a lot of activities you do from a day-to-day basis and how broad they truly are. The first of which is impaired control while playing. That means while you're playing the video game, you find yourself the inability to actually stop playing that game and actually do something else. On top of that, you then become to prioritize those games over other things, whether it's real life friends or getting enough food or hydration, whatever it might be. And very lastly, the escalation of gaming while still having the negative consequences. So you realize your health is degrading or whatever it might be, and you're still continuing to play the game. Now, again, this could be done for a load of addictions out there, but the real consequence of, the, of this article really is, is what defines an addiction when it comes to an amount of time or you know, what, if you have a career in a video game, is that a different kind of addiction? If we look at someone like Ninja, is he uh, allowed to play a longer amount of hours because he gets paid to do what he does? There's just so many contradictions and so many, I guess you could say, context this story could be taken in. And so I really do encourage you guys to look at Richard Lewis's video down below because I myself am not addicted to anything I don't think, although I do spend a lot of time watching YouTube 
YouTube videos, you know, you know, watching CSGO stuff, and I would say probably over 20 hours a week, but is that an addiction? Well, I don't think so myself, but someone else might look at me and say, yes, he is addicted. So it all comes to a point of context, what people see by their perspective. I would not say 20 to 30 hours of video games per week is necessarily an addiction, albeit it might be unhealthy for how young you are. I know that when I would ever come home in the middle school days, I would obviously go downstairs to my basement, I'd play MW2, whatever it was out, and I was definitely playing 20 to 30 hours a week, and I like to think that I came out just all right. You know, I have other I have other habits out there that probably aren't the best habits, but video games were certainly not uh, an unhealthy part of my life, I, at least I don't think. So all in all, BBC took these few kids, obviously playing Fortnite. I really can't show you guys too much of the video. I might play you a short clip. I don't want to get copyright struck down, but they took these four to five kids, obviously playing Fortnite, anywhere from 20 to 30 hours per week, and that was what they used as their content or their context to actually allude to a gaming addiction is now anyone who plays 20 plus hours of gaming content or video games in a single week, which I would probably say is a safe majority of gamers out there, which goes to show you, you know, it, it, Richard Lewis made some great points out there. They're not trying to target athletes out there. Of course, many athletes, let's say NFL, MLB, they're practicing far more than 20 hours a week. Are they addicted? Richard Lewis working more than 40 hours in a week at his job, is he addicted to work? It just goes to, it brings a lot of questions into it. I want you guys to comment down below. What do you think about this? It's obviously a very large topic to talk about, but anyway, back to closing out the CSGO video about CSGO news. And the huge news out there, guys, we do have a new team of the week, a new rising team out there, which I really did not see coming. I know many of you guys probably did, but that is actually the Imperial, no longer Team Imperial, a great rise over the past few months. They actually, the latest acquisition, they dropped a cillion for Crystal. Crystal, it, Crystal actually is their new IGL and their opper, and they actually did win DreamHack Summer this past weekend, taking down some very good teams in amazing fashion. They win DreamHack Summer without dropping in a single map. They actually went undefeated in group stages as well. They swept Gambit and Optic Gaming to take the title and the $50,000 prize. This team is definitely the team of the week right now and on the rise, and we could have an interview sometime soon in the future with them. If you guys want to see that, please leave a comment down below. That team is certainly a good-looking team out there. They've also had notable victories in the past few months, ever since Crystal joined, looking very solid. But even before his time, they were beating teams. I think we also had them beat teams like North and AGO. They also beat Heroic in a best-of-three series to win Copenhagen games. I think it was a couple months ago. So a team definitely on the rise here, and it also hopes to actually make the major qualifier itself. It'd be really cool to see a team out of nowhere, a team that was in the rye, out of you know, kind of a broken team these past few months, kind of build itself up from nothing and to what it is today. It'd be really cool to see how well they do. But also bouncing off that, we have former Penta coach. That's actually Mike S., actually a former coach of Crystal, who's now a part of the Imperial. He's actually retired, and apparently he will be looking for other coaching stints out there, but he's retired from competitive play of CSGO. Now also, bouncing off that, guys, very lastly for today's short episode of CSGO News. I do apologize for that. I've been very busy around here, haven't had a chance to check many articles out there, but please leave a comment down below, guys, uh, about your favorite story today or what you guys think. Uh, anything, leave a comment down below. We also have, very lastly, we have apparently Nico, that is actually FaZe Nico, coming off their win from ESL Bela Horizonte, where they look dominant with Chroman in place of, of course, Olaf Meister on that roster. Who knows the future of Olaf Meister right now, but apparently Nico is staying down there in Sao Paulo, where the announcement for MIBR will be made. It seems he's probably just going to be partying, taking a break from FaZe Clan. I highly doubt it, but people are talking about it. It seems that Nico is going to stay with Zeus, and will he actually make a change? Will he go from FaZe to the new MIBR brand slash Immortals brand? Who knows at this point, anything could happen. And huge apologies, guys. I know I probably talked even faster than I usually do in today's episode. I've just been really kind of trying to settle in here, as you guys can tell. We got the apartment here. Uh, I'm going to give you guys some more updates very shortly. I'm actually, I have no bed right now. I have no furniture. All I have is a TV and my PC setup. So it's been a bit difficult to go around here. But thank you all for the great support. Seriously, cannot thank you enough. I start work officially tomorrow, and I'm going to get back to the swing of things of news and all that kind of... I gotta get used to some things outside as well. I've, I've had to re-record a lot of clips so far because there seems to be loud noises everywhere, but we're gonna get, get it figured out. And as well, today was kind of a slow news day, but I promise you guys we'll be back to the swing of things very soon. As always, thank you all for watching. My name is Jake Moore, like you. I will see you guys all very shortly and some great things coming soon. So I'll see you all then, and I do start work officially tomorrow. It, a lot of stuff coming. I'll see you guys then. Bye.